Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here today with my January wrap up. And I left my notes over there. Hold please. Okay, January, pretty decent month. I've read seven books and I'm almost finished with another one, but you know, it's technically February, so we're just gonna add it to the next one. It's fine. Um, so anyways, let's start with, uh, we'll just go in order because that's how I wrote them down. First one I finished, and I finished this, I'm pretty sure, on like the second of the month. It's called The Duke Alone. It's by Christy Caldwell. It is a book that I heard about on the uh, Currently Reading podcast. Not, I don't remember which one read it. Uh, but it's definitely something that isn't something I would normally gravitate towards, but the way she was talking about it had me really intrigued. So it's set, um, I want to say like Regency era London. And so think Regency era London and Home Alone mashed together. So follows our main character who is um, home for Christmas with her really big loud family. And they live in this really huge house and it's getting renovated. And so the whole family is planning on going to Scotland for Christmas. And um, she hasn't really been around them too much. She's been off like at a boarding school doing her thing. And, and they forget her. <laughs> They leave without her. Uh, so she's home alone and has to try to figure out how to build a fire. How does she get food? What, what do we do? Um, and so she relies on the Duke that lives next door who is single. He has like one servant. There's a lot of rumors around why, you know, like what happened with his, with his wife, where his other servants went. And she just has to rely on him. And he is quite the grumpy man like he just he just doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody else and he has this dog who just falls in love with her it's just I don't know it was a sweet book I gave it three stars it was fine nothing like blow your mind phenomenal but at that point in time and, and it takes place over Christmas so it was it was just a good story at that time so there you go. Uh, then I picked up a new book, uh, Ghost 19 by Simone St. James. This was a short story that she wrote and was released on, um, I think it's just an ebook. I don't think it's in print. Um, but Simone St. James, hello. She's, she's my fave. And she can write a ghosty, creepy scene like no other. So this one, because it's a short story, I won't say too much, but basically like the house will not allow our character to leave. And so it's almost like, think, what was that movie, Rear Window, like, or Woman in the Window, like, where she's observing things and things are happening, but she can't leave her house. Um, but it's because the ghost, like, won't let her leave. It was good. It was good. I wanted more. I really wanted more. Um, I gave it four stars. I, I struggle with um, those short stories especially from authors I love because I just I want the whole thing I want the whole thing baked out I feel like it was missing a little something but overall really good and then for my audiobook for this month I listened to Stay Awake by Megan Golden this is one that I did get on NetGalley a while ago and why did I wait this was so good so good so we have our main character and she wakes up um where did she wake up in the back of a cab I think or maybe that was one time or on a bench she wakes up in this random place and can't remember how she got there um she has all this writing all over her hands telling her to stay awake don't fall asleep um her last memory it's summer and now it's cold out um and just trying to figure out like what happened so basically every time she falls asleep she resets and goes back to that last memory she had of her being at work on a summer day um, and so we start to kind of understand that she is connected to um, a murder that has happened and she doesn't know who to trust. And it even said like she has it written down on her arm, like don't trust anyone, don't answer any phone calls. She can't find her purse. She can't find her phone. She's totally lost. Um, and it follows her figuring some of that out and I really liked it. So I was listening to this and I was getting kind of towards the end and I was away for the weekend with some friends and my one girlfriend's like, just, you just gotta plow through. And it was kind of cool as I'm going through this story and she's there and I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my gosh, what just happened? What is this? And it was, I don't know, it was just cool that we were together at that point and, you know, sharing those same feelings like as, 
I'm reading this book. It was awesome. I really liked it. I gave it four stars. Um, next book I picked up was House on the Cerulean Sea by T.G. Klune. Why in the world? This is taking me so long to read. I don't know, but this is like a big hug in a book. It's so fantastic. So we have our main character, Linus. He's kind of, he's a caseworker in the department of, in charge of magical youth. Um, and he, he's just kind of surviving. Like he's not really living. He just is going through his day, literally just surviving. And he gets assigned to go to an island um, where some very mysterious magical youth live. Um, and he's going there to basically observe this specific orphanage of where they stay. He meets Linus and uh, Linus is the son of the devil. But Linus is like one of my favorite characters. Oh my goodness. There are amazing lines in this book. I got a I think I have it marked up in a number of different places just about like where you come from doesn't define you and no one's prophecy define like it's just it's just so good and so many life lessons in here it's just fantastic I I'm obsessed I gave it five stars no no doubt about that um then I picked up if you want to make God laugh <laughs> oh I've now read all of Bianca Morris's books I don't know which one's my favorite. They're all so unique and so different. Um, so I gave this one four stars. We have uh, two sisters. We have Ruth and Delilah. And they kind of have to come together um, for various reasons. They both retreat to their childhood home. And one morning they wake up and there is a newborn baby on their steps. And so Delilah and Ruth are white and have grown up in South Africa and there's a black baby that has deli been delivered to them. And Ruth, who has pined to have children all of her life, has basically said, I'm, I'm going to adopt this baby. I'm going to take care of this baby. So we get the story of those two and then we get the story of the baby's mom. What's her name again? Um, Zadwa. Um, so we get her side of the story and what's happening with her. This is all in the heights of the AIDS um, pandemic. Um, apartheid has just ended, but there's still a lot of racism going on. It was just beautiful. It was beautiful. And it's, it centers around found family. It centers around relationships. It centers around um, just having empathy and love for other people. It's, it's fantastic. I loved it. I gave it four stars. Um, then we went with Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. This is one of my five-star predictions, so I'm not going to tell you what I gave it. Um, I did really enjoy it. So we have two sisters who go missing one night, um, 15-year-old Cass and 17-year-old Emma. Um, people are completely baffled. It's like they just disappeared. And then three years later, Cass shows up. She just comes to her front door. And she's home. And so it goes through figuring out what happened and where's Emma. Um, really great mystery. I I do see myself kind of forgetting about this though. I don't know why, but I just, it seems like, okay, it's like other mysteries I've read before, you know, but it was still really good and I got through it pretty quick. I read it pretty fast. So anyways, I enjoyed it. And then the other book I picked up was Magic Hour by Kristen Hanna. Oh, such a good book. Um, so we have Pacific Northwest, which is where majority of Kristen Hanna's books take place. And we have our main character, Dr. Julia. She um, we come into her story at a really heartbreaking time for her. Um, she's a psychiatrist, a child psychiatrist, and one of the patients that she was helping ended up, um, is it on here? Ended up committing a crime that she, some people think she should have seen coming. Um, so her life is kind of up upturned and then she ends up going home because her sister Ellie needs her help. There is a child who has shown up out of the wilderness and they kind of call her a wild child like she doesn't speak. She doesn't really know basic hygiene or basic social skills um, and, ba and Ellie is like the only person that can help this girl is my sister and so Julia comes she's doubting herself because of what, have, what has just happened but she's also looking for something else to kind of focus on and attach to and it becomes this girl um 
and we go from there and it's it just it was fantastic there it's a great reminder of why I love Kristen Hanna as an author she's just so good so good so another great one so that's everything I've read um next up let's see I'm currently reading The Perfect Marriage um by Geneva Rose I'm almost halfway through and part of me is like why is this so like blow, blow my mind it's not quite blowing my mind yet but knowing you know this type of a book which is like his mistress is found dead his wife is a, the, like the best defense attorney it's only only hope of saving adam and we have both perspectives we have adam and we have sarah as they're going through this but knowing this type of story i'm i'm, I'm assuming some good stuff's gonna happen you know like back here so we'll see we're gonna keep going it still has my attention short chapters multiple perspectives it's all the all the good stuff for a Lindsay book i'm also listening to three hours in paris by Sierra Black, I believe. Oh, and I'm loving it. World War II historical fiction. Shocker. Um, but it's basically about the last few hours that Hitler was alive in Paris, and we're following a um, sniper who's trying to take him out. And she's a woman. It's so good. I really love it. Um, but I have a few hours left on that, so I'm thinking I'll get a puzzle out, and we'll just knock it out. It'll be great. Um, as far as next up... What else do I have to read this month? Um, I am on a historical kit, a historical fiction kick, so I do want to pick up The Rose Code. I almost picked this up instead of this, but knowing I'm listening to a World War II historical fiction and having this one at the same time, I think it would have just confused me. So I really want this to come up quickly next. Um, I have one more five-star prediction to read, and then I need to get these back to my friends. So um, Picking Up Wild at Heart is the second book in the Simply Wild series by K.A. Tucker. Um, so I know I'm, I'm sure this will go quick. So that's kind of on my radar. I don't know. I've got I've got a pile back here, you know, how I just pick from them. I do have a few kind of set aside that I have more of my next steps, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've also have brand new books that just came into my <laughs> possession that I'm really excited for as well. So um, that's kind of just what's coming up. If you've read any of those and you think I should pick any of that up before the other, let me know. Um, otherwise, if you've read any of the books I talked about, let's chat in the comments. And how do we get more people to read The House on the Australian Sea? Let's just, just find a way because it's so good. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you next time. Bye.